Those of you who know me and know uh, some about our life, you know that Sue and I have four children. Three girls were born to us and then a son. Sue said, that's it. I said, yes, ma'am. I want to talk to you a little bit about daughters. Now, if you're here and you have sons, don't think this is irrelevant. Um, It is relevant to you. Um, You know, it's very important, you know, um, that uh, those daughters... um, got to know their parents, and I'll just speak for me, very important to me that they got to know their dad, and that um, <clears throat> that they bear the right image, that they bear the image of Susan and I, our Father, our Father in Heaven, that they bear His image, that the right seed had to be put into them. And, well, for all our kids, but I'm just specifically speaking about daughters this morning because it's going to tie in with what the Lord, I believe, is wanting to say to us this morning. And your daughters, that you know, they're little, you love them, you play with them, you let their mom dress them in girly clothes and your girls like it, and then you got a girl or two who like to put on a ball cap from time to time, and when she ain't looking, I'm going, you know, and uh, just the the difference between our daughters in in different ways, you know, Uh, Brittany was born, and I don't know, we, we were expecting our second and Jessica came along, and oh, I guess there's another option of what a daughter's like. You know, it wasn't just another Brittany. And then we're expecting our third daughter, and I'm thinking, well, who's she going to be like? She's going to be more like, you know, she's going to be like Brittany or like Jessica? Like, there's only two options. And then Sydney came, and it was like, oh, there's there's another option. And there are some similarities in each of them. There are similarities in them to their mother. There are some similarities in them of their dad. And, you know, they come from my seed, okay? And um, so you watch them grow and you watch your children, you know, And you see traits and different things come out. But what was important to us is that the right seed, the seed of God, was in them that they would bear his image. And then they get to the awful place in life where they want to date. (sighs) She's excited. You know, first boyfriend. And, uh, and I'm like, well, okay, you're talking like the devil, as far as I'm concerned. You know, I mean, that's just, you know, <laughs> that's a father, you know. This, this, this is my little girl. These are my girls. I mean, you know, Brittany was the oldest, so she was the first one to kind of have a, you know, boyfriend other than like a little first grade. <laughs> He's cute and, you know. <laughs> Whatever, I, all that, that, that was fine. You know, I sailed through that, no problem. But, you know, then it's like, well, so-and-so asked me out, and I like this boy, and I'm like, well, where are the three of us going? You know? <laughs> hey, I'm into mini golf. That's fine, you know, whatever. Um, so, and that's not really how things happen, because... You're staying home, you know. You're not going. Um, and uh, not that, I don't want you to think the idea is Sue was pushing them out the door to date boys. That wasn't it. It's just, you know, she was a girl. She went through this. She wants to mother her daughters and, you know, and all that stuff. And, 
Then it comes to a point where, you know, when you're letting them out the door, you hope at that point that you have allowed and put God's seed in them that they will bear his image as they go out that door. And then as when they come home and you pretend like you, oh, we're relaxed all evening. Oh, you're home already. Oh, you know, that kind of thing. And, you know, then the two of them run off and go talk about how was your date. And I'm just like, that kid, he's not the answer. He's not God's answer for her. You know, I'm working through all that stuff as a dad. You know, you want to protect them, right? Yeah, you ever, you know, even a son, you want to protect them. But, you know, speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for every dad. It's not a chauvinistic thing. It's just, it's different. You want to protect your son, but at the same token, he needs to learn to be the protector. And my girls, they don't need anyone else, just me, okay? <laughs> I'm their protect, you know, and uh, you, you want them to find the, the right guy. This is your girl. This is, these are your daughters. This is your daughter, right? You want, you want the right seed to be put in her so that her children bear his image. I don't want her with the wrong guy getting the wrong seed. They had a Christian dad. The right seed. They were born of the right seed. And they come into their own faith, and we want that seed of God. They, they bear the image of God. They don't bear the image of the beast or 666. They bear the number 888, Christ. Image of God. Then, you know, they get to the point where now a date is not where they walk together somewhere or one of the parents give them a ride. Now the stupid jerk's got a license. You know, he shows up with, you know, if the car was his, it was run down, beaten up, and you're like, man, I, I hope that thing just dies at the corner because I can see them, you know, or their parents' vehicle. Psh, big loser, didn't have a job, couldn't buy your own car, you know, I guess, you know, whatever, I, you know. I had a really good attitude about all this. <laughs> And, uh, you know, you want them to marry the right guy. I, I am very, listen, I, I, am, I am very grateful for my son-in-laws. Now, they're not perfect, and I know them, and I know some of their sins, and I know some of their shortcomings. But I will tell you this, I am so grateful that my daughters listened to me and that my blessing to them meant something. But they honored some things that I said. Is he a Christian? Does he believe in Jesus Christ? And is he baptized in the Holy Spirit with the initial physical evidence of tongues? Those are my requirements. There were some other things, but those are my requirements. You say, well, you can't back that up scripture. Listen, they're my daughters. I can say what I want. Those are my big two requirements. Because I knew then that God's seed was in them. Because they're going to have children one day, most likely. And those children, they bear my image. I bear the image of God. His seed in me. I'm not perfect. Oh my goodness, His grace and mercy. In my life, but that's the right seed. They were born of the right seed. And they bear the image of God. They better marry the right men because they're going to have grandchildren, my grandchildren. 
and that's my inheritance. My children and my grandchildren, that's my inheritance. I don't want some strange wrong seed messing it up. So don't mess with my daughters. Right? I want you to know that, uh, as I shared with you, a little comical and a little of my flesh came out, but I want you to know that the principle of this is how God feels about his daughters. I want to relate a few things to you. Um, in Luke chapter 8, Jesus arrives in Jairus. He's a ruler of the synagogue, okay? Jewish guy. He arrives, Jesus does, and Jairus seeks Jesus out. Now, he's a ruler of the synagogue, he, religious guy. Um, you know, generally speaking, the religious leaders weren't really in favor of Jesus so much. But Jairus comes to him and he says, listen, I got a 12-year-old daughter. She's dying. Will you please come and heal my daughter? And Jesus, of course, is in favor. Let's, let's go. Take me to her. And, of course, there's a crowd because they were expecting Jesus to show up. So there's a crowd around him, and you know this story. There is a woman in this crowd who is struggling and wrestling for 12 years with an issue of bleeding. No one can fix it. No one can heal her. She slips through, you know the story, she slips through and touches the hem of Jesus' garment because she thinks, if I can just get to him, if I can just touch the hem of his garment, I will be healed. And so the crowd is there, and they're pressing in on Jesus and the disciples, and just, you know, there's no crowd control. They're just all there. They want to see him, hear him. They're coming with needs. And he's now moving from where he's at on his way to get to Jairus' house, where his 12-year-old daughter is dying. And this woman who has an issue of blood for 12 years. Are you picking up on the number here, by the way? And Jesus all of a sudden stops and says, whoa, 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 who touched me? And they're like, Jesus, we're in a crowd. Everybody's touching you. No, no, I felt power go out for me. And they track it down, and there's this lady who's been bleeding for 12 years. And Jesus, he turns to her, and he says to her, daughter, Daughter. He calls her daughter. Your faith. Your faith made you whole. Now, Jesus doesn't call everybody daughter, and he doesn't call everybody son. But he called her daughter. You see, she was bearing the mark of sickness, which we know came into humanity because of sin and because of what happened in the Garden of Eden. I want you to remember I mentioned that as we go through this message about the Garden of Eden and who Satan came to. He came to Eve deceived her. Here's this woman, 12 years, and Jesus calls her daughter as she's healed, that she would no longer bear the mark of sin or sickness because she is a daughter of God. So whose image is she now going to bear? See, the right seed was now put into her. 
Not the seed of sin and sickness, but the seed of God was put in her. That she is a daughter. Jesus goes on his way to Jairus' home. When he gets there, then well, as he's on his way, the news comes that, that she died. And he tells Jairus, don't, I'm paraphrasing, Jairus, don't you worry. Don't you worry. Let's go. And Jesus gets there, and there's already mourners out there, and they're crying and wailing and all of those things. And Jesus says, basically, stop that. She's, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. They laugh. They mock. And Jesus says to her, Talitha kum or kumi, and it means the little girl rise. Now, who is she a daughter of? She's a daughter of a Jewish man, religious man, ruler of the synagogue. You see, she's, she's a daughter of Israel, a daughter of Jerusalem. She's a daughter of God. And she was bearing the image of sin and sickness. And Jesus comes and says, this is a daughter, a daughter of Jerusalem, a daughter of Israel, a daughter of God's people. She bears the image of God. That lady struggled for 12 years this little girl is 12 years old. If you notice when Jesus goes through, not all of these people that he heals are their ages revealed or uh, those kind of things or how long they struggled always. There's indications, but I want you to understand that sin and sickness, and I'm not trying to work mathematical numbers here, I'm just telling you that God is very consistent throughout his whole word. And, and when you look at the number 12, and I know you can say it's divisible by two and it's divisible by three and it's all, but I want you to know that six is not the mark of God. There's a third lady we're going to talk about here. And this, this lady with the issue of blood, she bears the mark of sin and sickness. And Jesus delivers her because she has been marked by the devil himself or the beast or 666 or 12 being divisible by six, two sixes. This woman, there's, be, there's hints all along the way because understand this, that you were made in God's image and you and I are supposed to bear his image. And those who forfeit that and bear the image other than God will lose out in the end. We've been studying the book of Revelation. That's no mystery to you on Wednesday nights. Um, and it just comes out over and over again that the issue that happened in Genesis and throughout the pages and throughout mankind, God comes and he settles it all in Revelation. For those who bear his image and for those who don't. There's, there's a woman here in Luke chapter 13, she has a disabling spirit, okay? She, she, doctors have tried to help her. She, she's hunched over. She has a disabling spirit. And Jesus shows up, <laughs> and he heals her. And it's on the Sabbath, of course. And so, you know, all the religious leaders, they're so wrapped up. And, you know, this is the Sabbath, and you can't do that. When this woman needs a Sabbath... Take a guess how, how long she struggled with this. No, 18. I set you up for that. I set you up for that. 18. She was bearing the image and the mark of 666. And Jesus calls her a daughter of Abraham. Because he heals her, and she, 
she's healed and, and they come and they complain and, and Jesus refutes and he says, listen, this is the daughter of Abraham. A daughter. One of God's daughters. And the right seed is in her. She is to bear the image of God. If the seed of God is in you, we are to bear his image. These are his daughters. I, I feel it from a human perspective. I told you a little bit of how I feel when it comes to my daughters. And that they would marry the right guy. And boy, did I watch some other than the right guys come through my door. And if any of them are watching, God bless you. Bear the image of God. I'm glad I got to meet you. And it's not that I hate you. It's just that you weren't God's selection for my daughters at the time. I, I look at, at Justin, who married Brittany. He, he bears the right image. And therefore, my grandchildren will bear the right image. I'm thankful for Luke. There's a spiritual vein that runs through that, preacher kid, that preacher's kid about Pentecost and the power of God. Do both those guys have struggles and wrestlings in their life? Yes. <laughs> they married my daughters. <sighs> Who bear the right image. I'm so thankful for Tim, who Sydney married, our third daughter. He wants to honor the Lord. He cares about the things of God. I'm thankful that they believe in Jesus Christ and that they are baptized in the Holy Spirit. The right seed. But those are my daughters. They didn't just come strolling in and I went, oh, well, okay. I don't know who you are or whatever. Now, Justin, I knew a little more because he's from here. And he, he came and talked to Sue and I because he started to have interest in Brittany while she was a senior in high school. And I said, hey, that's great, dude. Here's the deal. You're not taking her out until she graduates from high school because he's a few years older than her. And I said, Sorry, dude. I said, the good news is you don't have to wait seven years. <laughs> right? <laughs> you don't have to wait seven years. I'm not going to make you work for me for seven years. It crossed, it crossed my mind, but you know, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, Old Testament story. Um, those of you who read the Bible, you, you know that. Um, but anyhow, um, he, he waited. He honored, he honored our word. And I knew that he would because I already had a glimpse into that guy. He had the right seed in him. The other two son-in-laws, they had to come in and put up with my intimidating nature. And uh, under a little scrutiny, not like I sat them down and said, so what are your intentions with my daughter? I knew their intentions. I got great daughters. I know their intention. And they're male. I am one. I know our intentions. Okay? But I got to know them a little here and there. Got to watch how my daughters were with them. Because see, the right seed was in them. And they were bearing his image. I have to trust them. To trust them. Trust the Lord. So here's these ladies in Scripture, all referred to as daughters. Daughters of the Lord. Bear his image. You know, 
I'm, we're going to turn to a story here in 2 Kings chapter 19. Now, this is God's people here, and the Assyrians are coming. And they're sending messages to Hezekiah. Um, messages, I'm going to read little pieces of chapter 19. You can read it all on your own later. Um, You see, Isaiah, Isaiah prophesies and says to Hezekiah, listen, don't be afraid because of the words that you've heard with which the servants of the king of Assyria have reviled me or reviled God's people or reviled you. You see, the, the, the king of Assyria was going around and conquering and they were coming to Jerusalem. And they're sending messages Messages that this kind of gives a little bit of the idea. Behold, he has set out to fight against you. So he sent messengers again to Hezekiah saying, Thus shall you speak to Hezekiah, king of Judah. Do not let your God in whom you trust deceive you by promising that Jerusalem will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Behold, you have heard what the king of Assyria has done to other lands, uh, devoting them to destruction. And you think you'll be delivered? And it goes on like this. And then the word of the Lord has been spoken concerning him. It says, she despises you, she scorns you. This is, this is a prophetic word now, back to the Assyrians. She despises you, she scorns you. The virgin daughter of Zion She wags her head behind you, the daughter of Jerusalem. I want want you to know that, just a little side note here, when when God's people are referred to as Israel, that's a a masculine term. Uh, When God's people are referred to as Zion or Jerusalem, that's a feminine term. And so when you look through Scripture and how God re- refers and relates to his people or you go back to uh, Jacob's journey and Jacob, his name was changed to Israel, masculine. And so, you know, we see those kind of words and languages sometimes, um, you know, uh, uh, Giovanna, Giovanni, it's male, female. We see it in languages. And so here, it's kind of a simple way to say, you know, when God refers to um, Israel, it's masculine. When he calls God's people Zion or Jerusalem, refers to him that way, it's, it's female, it's daughter. And so what happens is things unfold here. As Assyrians mock God, mock God's people, and they basically say, we're coming for you. And they show up outside Jerusalem. I want you to watch what happens. And the surviving remnant of the house of Judah shall again take root downward and bear, up, uh, bear fruit upward. In other words, this is prophecy about, oh no, God's people aren't going anywhere. Their, their roots are going to go down and they're going to grow up. This is God's people. For out of Jerusalem shall go a remnant, and out of Mount Zion a band of survivors. The zeal of the Lord will do this. Now watch what happens. When they show up and they continue to mock, they send their messages, all this stuff. They're messing with who? Jerusalem, Zion. According to the prophecy, that's God's daughters. Virgin daughter. Daughter. Watch what happens. Therefore, thus says the Lord concerning the king of Assyria, he shall not come into this city or shoot an arrow there or come before it with a shield or cast up a siege mount against it. By the way that he came, by the same he shall return and he shall not come into this city, declares the Lord. For I will defend this city to save it for my own sake and for the sake of my servant David. Who's he rescuing here? His daughter. God's people. Jerusalem, Zion, his daughter. They're saying, we're coming to get your girl. We're coming to get your daughter. 
They want to put the wrong seed in her. God says, you're, you're, not, you're not doing that to my daughter. She bears my image. And that night, that night, the angel of the Lord went out and struck down 185,000 in the camp of the Assyrians. You think you're going to come mess with my daughter? <laughs> oh, really? You think so? You, you, you mock me, make fun of me, and you're coming for my daughter? Oh, that ain't happening. And when people arose early in the morning, behold, these were all dead bodies. Then the king of Assyria departed and went home and lived at Nineveh. And while he was worshiping in the house of his false idol god, two of his sons struck him down and killed him. They fled to Ararat, and the other son rose to be king in his place. This is the king that was making the threats against the daughter of God. I want you to know that God takes very serious how he feels about you and about his church. How he feels about his people who bear his image. Why don't you stand up with me, please? Satan's plan, listen to this, Satan's plan has always been to threaten the daughter. You go back to Eve. Who did he approach? He wanted to put his seed in her. You can look through the Old Testament and God's people. They were always wanting to see. They, the, the enemy was always oppressing her and, and were they used as discipline at times so the daughter would turn her heart back to the image that she was made with and the seed of God in her. There are some things that unfolded in my daughter's life that probably were wake-up calls at times, going, whoa, what am I doing? This is not the guy for me. Hallelujah. God heard my prayers, but he put them in me to begin with. They weren't just a biased father. I mean, my bias was in there, but, you know, at some point I know I'm giving them away, but I want to give them to the right, way to the right guy. You are made in his image. You're called to bear his image. His seed is put in you. You are his people. He's your God. You know, Ephesians chapter 5, Paul says a very interesting thing when he's talking about husbands and wives. He said, and he's talking about the relationship between a husband and a wife, and he says, this is a profound mystery. As he's talking about earthly husbands and wives. And he talks about the groom, the man being Christ and the church is his bride. The daughter becomes the daughter of God through this marriage. Daughter. This is my son, married Naomi. I'm going to treat her like a daughter. Don't mess with Naomi. Not that she needs me to protect her, because I'll tell you what, she could, well, never mind. <laughs> She's my girl. And she had to meet the requirements before my son could propose to her. She had to bear the right seed. Because the baby on the way 
my inheritance. They are my image. Bear the image of God. Why is this why is this so important to God to protect this daughter, to protect his his church, his people? That they bear the right image. It's because of this. We become the bride of Christ. We have to have the right seed in us. You think I care who my children married? Oh, yeah. Do you think God's just going to have any old bride for his son? No. It's us. And we have to have the right seed in us. We have to be made ready. We have to bear his image. Without spot, without wrinkle. And I'll tell you what. God doesn't take it lightly when Satan messes with his people, his church, his daughter, his son's bride. He doesn't take it lightly. I don't know if, I don't know if Amos and Rachel are listening to this this morning. But little Ellison, that's God's daughter. That's Jesus calling her daughter. That she would not bear the image of Satan, but rather the image of God. And I pray that he would deliver her just like he delivers you from sin, our waywardness. I don't know all your history, but I'm going to tell you this, that he cares about you. And if you reject him and want to go bear your own image, your own plan, the image other than God's, It's your decision, it's your choice, but he does not give you up easily, and I want you to know that he will chase you and he will run to do good to you. Understand this. There is an enemy of our soul, and we don't need to fear him if we are in Christ. Because there is one who will fight for you. If you will let him gather you and you will come to him like a hen gathers her chicks to live under the shadow of the Almighty. He's not going to just give you away. made you a daughter and nobody can just march right in he won't allow it so choose to bear the image that he's created you to bear have the right seed in you the seed of God and remember this not just for your own life but for your children and for your children's children For the children of this church body who is part of our family, those children to bear God's image. Jesus came to redeem us. He came to set us free of the power of the devil. To set us free from sin and sickness. From set us free and overcome the power of demonic oppression and attacks in our life. 
if we will continue to walk after him as a daughter who bears his image, not out on her own, but carefully watching our life, our doctrine, our attitude, our outlook, our faith. So I want you to know your past is your past. When it comes to Christ, your past is your past. There's forgiveness, there's the power of his blood, he came to rescue you. And he bear, he, you will bear his image. You will bear his image. People may lock you away in the reputation and have you marked from your past, but there is new life in Christ. The old has passed away. And if they don't get it, that's their issue. You bear the image of him who has come. The image of Christ. 888, our Savior.